Hi everybody, it's CHC. Uh, this is our third class in the series on Lessons from the Life of Lamech, and this class is called Lamech's Wrong Way. Um, so yesterday we talked about Lamech's big mouth. We talked about his, um, his unforgiving, vengeful, and violent spirit. And I also wanted, uh, because we ran out of time, just wanted to pick up um, one of the most important things that we can learn from Lamech. So I want to ask somebody uh, in grade four or five or six or seven or eight, we're all the way up, um, to do some mental math for me, okay? So let's go I'm going to do some mental math. Did anybody groan when I said mental math? You shouldn't groan when we say mental math because this is really, really helpful. All right, so come with me to uh, Genesis chapter four and I want you to look at verse 24. And that says, remember these were the words of uh, Lamech. He said, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold or seven times, truly Lamech, so he's talking about himself, truly Lamech shall be avenged seven, seventy and sevenfold. So what he's saying is that Lamech is going to be, I'm going to be avenged and I'm going to avenge myself. I'm going to take my sword or I'll use my fists or I'll use my unkind words to try and get back at people who do something that I think is wrong to me. That's what Lamech was saying. And he's like, I'm going to do it. If you're going to do it to me, I'm going to do it not seven times worse. I'm going to do it 70 times seven times worse. So how many times is that? Let's do some mental math. What's 70 times seven? So seven times seven is... And then you multiply it by 10 because you got the zero. What do you got? What do you think? 490. Very good. So 490 times. That's, that's what Lamech said. You do something to me, I'm going to do it worse 490 times to you. Or I'll do it 490 more times back to you. That's, that is an unforgiving spirit. Now, what I want you to do is, is think about that. So the number 490 to Lamech represented not his mercy, not his forgiveness, but his unforgiveness, his vengeance, and his violence. <clears throat> and I'm sure that if he asked one of his sons, in particular, if he would ask Tubal Cain, hey Tubal Cain, do you, uh, do you have a sword I could buy? Can you make me like a really nice sword out of iron? I know you're really good at it. If you make a really nice sword, because I have a few people that I need to get back. And they're not going to say anything about us or against us. And if they do, we're going to go after them with our swords that you know how to make. Can't you see Lamech saying something like that? These were violent times. They were definitely violent times. Now, I want you to come with me to um, Matthew chapter 18. And even if you don't come with me, sorry, I just say that because it's a habit of mine. But if you have your Bible, turn it up. Because the number 490 is extremely important to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 18, Peter comes to Jesus and says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? So Peter's saying, how many times should I forgive him? Like, you forgive him once, they do the same thing, you do it, you forgive him again and again and again. But there's a limit, right? If, if somebody sins against you seven times, isn't that enough forgiveness? And look what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18. He says, I say not unto you seven times, but until 70 times seven. And you know what Jesus is doing? Is he was saying, think about how unforgiving Lamech was. He was going to unforgive people 490 times, or he was going to get people back 490 times for a sin against him. And Jesus says, I want you to be the exact opposite of Lamech. Look at the terrible example of Lamech, and I want you to be the opposite of that. I want you to be forgiving. And that's Jesus' lesson about the number 490. It's a wonderful lesson that comes out of um, what we're looking at. But, um, but Lamech was going his own way, and it's what the Bible calls the way of Cain. And he was in the way of Cain. He wasn't just in the line of Cain, because Cain was like his great, 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 great grandfather, but he was, he was also following in the pathway of Cain. And that was the problem with Lamech. He was becoming that much worse than his father, Cain. And you know, there was somebody 
who really would have given Lamech a hard time back in his generation. Back in Lamech's day, there would have been somebody who really bothered him, and that person would have been Enoch. What do you think Lamech would have said to somebody like Enoch, who was prophesying against the ungodly speeches that people were saying at those times? And Lamech was one of those people. How do you think he would have felt about that? Well, he would have felt like he was being attacked, and he would have felt the same way that Cain would have felt, except it seems that much worse. And we actually know from the Bible that people were going after Enoch to chase him. And can't you see Lamech doing something like that? It doesn't say he was the one who chased him, but it was it could have been. But it was people it were people like it was people like Lamech, his children and all of the many people on the earth at that time that were part of the seed of the serpent, who were behaving like the serpent, who were behaving like Cain, who Enoch was directing his words to. And there was a search made for Enoch. Did you know that? So we get some hints about this, and I just want to show those things to you. Um, so the first verse I want you to go to is um, in Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 is so cool because uh, this gives us the other side of the um, genealogy of Adam and Eve. This gives us the side of those who were, who were being faithful. And so when we look here at um, Genesis 5 at verse 21, it says um, in verse 24 that Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. What a strange verse. He was not for God took him. So we have to go into the New Testament, which is very helpful to them, um, as to what was happening here. And it, Hebrews 11 and verse 15, it says, it actually talks about how Enoch was a faithful man, living at the same time as Lamech. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And all that means is that he was moved, he was transported, he was moved so that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. So what does it mean that he was not found? Well, people were looking for him. And in a violent world, which we know that it was, people were looking to go get Enoch. But God wouldn't let him be found. It wasn't time for Enoch's, uh, it wasn't time for Enoch to be, uh, uh, to be taken away by death. Enoch did die, Hebrews 11 tells us that, but it wasn't at that time when people were looking for him. It says that he was not found. So he was a faithful prophet of God. And in Genesis chapter 5, it says um, that he walked with God. And we're going to talk a little bit more about his faithfulness um, as we uh, look at our last class, which will be coming up tomorrow, God willing.